Hello dear fans, uh, friends and uh, subscribers. Uh, welcome to the uh, Cricket Happening Show here. And well, uh, on this uh, particular Cricket Happening Show, uh, well, what, uh, what we are going to look at is, uh, one is uh, a match which is being played. It's the last warm-up match, I reckon, uh, because World Cup is absolutely drawing near. I mean, I would say the excitement is really, really building down uh, to a real crescendo here, uh, I would say, uh, for the World Cup. Uh, people are just uh, raring to go. They're just waiting to watch their, uh, their favorite stars in action uh, in World Cup 2015 when it, uh, when it kicks off on that fantastic day, uh, on a lovely day, one could say, on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February 2015. Well, today, there's a, I think it's, this is the last warm-up match which is being played, if I'm right. Uh, well, the warm-up match happens to be between Afghanistan and United Arab Emirates. So, uh, basically, one could say they are minnows. And, well, the match situation here, while I'm talking to you, says that Afghanistan, were the ones, Afghanistan won the toss and elected to bat. And I thought United Arab Emirates are doing a good job here uh, to have Afghanistan, uh, the, the Afghanistan score at 77 for 3 uh, and in the 18th over. So I'll come back to that and then I'm going to look, have a look at the two warm-up matches that happened yesterday. Uh, one was between Bangladesh and Ireland and let me tell you, Bangladesh really need to do a lot of hard work here because Ireland uh, defeated Bangladesh uh, in, a, in a very comfortable manner, one could say, as uh, Bangladesh... Um, Initially, they couldn't put up a good score on the board. And then the Irish batsman, especially Balbirni, uh, really imposed himself on the Bangladeshi bowlers. As Bangladesh, won, uh, Bangladesh lost the match by four wickets. So Bangladesh have lost all the matches in the warm-up matches here. And then the match between Scotland and West Indies was a real beauty. Because as said, West Indies already crippled, as you know, with a lot of players not there. Uh, but uh, let me tell you one thing. Scotland uh, really seems to be... Uh, really, really, I would say, firing on all cylinders because the other day they put up a huge score on the board and usurped the total uh, against um, against uh, the Irishmen. And today they really gave West Indies a real scare. And what a scare that was! If you look at the margin, West Indies put up a, 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 a tally of 313 for nine on the board. And look at what Scotland did. Scotland reached almost, almost, I would say, they almost grabbed the neck of West Indies to put on 310 for 9 of 50 overs and finally uh, Scotland uh, unfortunately had to lose this match by just 3 runs so the margin was so slender and you know it was so near it so far but um, well let me tell you the one thing that West Indies uh, have to really pull up and uh, what I'm seeing here is that the Scotland team uh, has probably come up with a, a sort of a real determination here because the other day as I said uh, they racked up a huge score in the, in the sense they uh, chased, uh, I, I thought they set up a huge score and bowled out Ireland and today West Indies putting up a big score and, and almost successfully chasing that even though they lost by three runs but look at the way the Scottish batsmen played, oh that was really wonderful to see and well Scotland are they going to um, do some surprises here, are they going to upset some apple carts in this World Cup 2015, it really really uh, brings us to the question one could say. But, uh, well, so just starting off from here, let's get on to the match between Scotland and West Indies. Let me start off with that exciting match which happened. Um, yesterday, when I was talking to you, I said that uh, the Scotland were doing well uh, with uh, West Indies, um, Dinesh Ramadin at the crease at that time. Uh, and just giving you a summary, West Indies made 313 for 9 of their 50 overs. Uh, I had already spoken about it, that Dwayne Smith made 45, 47 balls, 5 fours and 2 sixes. Darren Bravo making 43 of 72 balls with 4 fours. But it was Dinesh Ramadan who contributed the highest score of 88, of 86 balls, 6 fours and 1 6. Uh, Simmons uh, really thrashed the, uh, the, the, uh, the Scottish bowling uh, by, uh, by, by making 55 of 47 deliveries with 5 fours and uh, 2 sixes. Andre Russell and uh, Darren Sami clubbed the uh, ball to all parts of the ground with Andre Russell's share being 24 of just 14 deliveries with 3 fours and 1 6. Darren Sammy slammed 36 of 17 Delvis, 4 fours and 1 6. And finally, West Indies, I thought, did pretty well to reach a score of 313 for 9 of 50 overs. Now, the bowling, uh, Wardlaw had 10 overs, 2 maidens, 1 for 61. Taylor, 8 overs, went for 52. Evans, 10 overs, 3 for 63. Uh, Josh Davey, 10 overs, 2 for 55. 
Huck had 10 overs, 1 for 66, 2 overs, 9 for 13. In fact, none of the ballers were spared uh, as, as, um, uh, by the West Indian batsmen. You have to look at Scotland. They are chasing 314 runs from 50 overs. And remember, this is a big total that West Indies put on the board. You are almost chasing at a clip of 6 runs per over. What a start uh, was provided by the openers. Uh, uh, Kyle Coetzer and Callum McLeod. They really, really... Uh, started in fact Kemar Roosh and Sean Cottrell uh, did not uh, did not uh, have any effect on the uh, Scottish batsmen as Coetzer and McLeod were playing them pretty easily and finally the partnership boomerang to 75 runs in 15 overs so they were definitely uh, trying to you know keep in pace in the sense they were they really uh, had probably uh, I mean the the way they were pacing the chase it was good to see and Kyle Coetzer and McLeod was very very impressive and then uh, finally uh, McLeod was out for 32 of 39 balls with 5 fours, but uh, it was Kyle Coetzer still there in the middle and also spanking a lot of boundaries uh, and he was playing a fine hand there, was holding the innings there. Gardiner was out for 7 of 17 deliveries. Machan could make only 17. The other day he well, did well against Ireland, as you would remember Matthew Machan is the captain of the Scottish team here, contributed 17 of 18 balls with 1 four and 1 six. Coleman made 34 of 35 balls with 3 fours, and then um, they, they, I mean, even though they, uh, uh, they, they were 104 for 2, 124 for 3, and they were 154 for 4 when Quetzer departed. Now, Quetzer was the highest scorer, contributing 96 of, uh, of 106 balls with 14 fours. But uh, it was Bevington and Cross who combined into a wonderful partnership uh, because the score, um, um, I would say, the score was taken from 214 when Coleman departed. And after that, it was Matthew Cross. Uh, along with uh, Richard Barrington, who really um, did a fine job because they took the total uh, from, uh, they really gave themselves a chance there because what they did is from, uh, uh, from a score of 214 for 5, which was in the 40th over, uh, they took the score on uh, to the 48th over. So basically we are looking at um, probably uh, 54 balls being bowled and in that space of 54 balls, what Richie Barrington and Matthew Cross did uh, was to get 86 runs of that um, uh, almost the 54 balls so that was pretty good going and that was what um, really gave the West Indies a scare as both the batsmen started getting runs under the belt. Uh, Bedington uh, and then finally it was a relief for the West Indians as Matthew Cross was out for 39 of 31 balls with four fours but Bedington continued his um, uh, uh, continued, uh, continued, but uh, well, he could go only as much as 66 was concerned out of 44 balls, 6 fours and 1 second. Then finally, the match uh, really came down to the wire when Bennington departed with a score on 302 for 7. And finally, uh, it was 302 for 7 was the score. Uh, and that particular over, uh, which was uh, bowled by Russell, uh, was a good over because what he did is uh, he kept the runs down and the score was 300 and 2 for 8 when Taylor departed in the final ball of Russell's over for not the score at 302 for 8 and uh, after that uh, the 50th over started uh, and then the 50th over was given to Kemar Roche so Kemar Roche uh, it was 14 runs of 2 overs for Scotland to win and then finally as the match came down to the wire it was left with the final over and the final over was entrusted to Kemar Roche and Kemar Roche well he leaked 8 runs of the uh, of the I would say in the, in the first uh, initial deliveries, uh, uh, then, but after that, uh, I, I, I thought, uh, yeah, he, he, he gave away five runs of the first three balls that he bowled on the 50th over, and then finally, uh, when the match, I mean, they went all the way down, but uh, one has to credit Kemar Roche, he really saved the face for West Indies uh, by seeing to it uh, that uh, Scotland wouldn't be able to actually win the match, as uh, he actually had the wicket of Huck with the third delivery, uh, of the 50th over when he was got for not and that was the end of the match uh, so but Scotland let me tell you a, a commendable performance from them and as I said they have looked absolutely wonderful in this uh, well in these warm-up matches and um, really looking uh, pretty hungry there uh, the Scottish uh, whether you take the batting bowling I wouldn't say but the batting is looking pretty hungry one can really really look at that and say that the Scottish batsmen are absolutely hungry for runs and I think the opposition has to really guard because, uh, I, you know, what, really, uh, what it really tells me is that against Ireland, they managed to put more than 300 on the board and then, um, you know, bowl out the Irishmen 
in, a, in a very cheap manner. And here they have run the very, very, I mean, we know that West Indies are crippled, but uh, one, did, one did expect West Indies uh, to actually have such a game against Scotland, even though they, they, they don't boast of some big names uh, like Wayne Bravo, Kiran Pollard and Sunil Narin. One thought West Indies could have done much better, but Scotland definitely they have some real, uh, I would say, some real pump in them. Because what they did is uh, they played some wonderful cricket to, West in, to run the West Indies so close and really, really scare them, I would say. Let's have a look at the West Indian bowling here. Uh, Kemar Rose, 8 overs, no maiden, 2 for 59. Uh, I thought he was the one who saved the face for West Indies, bowling that 50th over when 12 runs were there to defend when he picked up the final wicket of R. Huck. What a relief that would have been for Kemar Rose. Uh, Cottrell, 10 overs, 1 maiden, 1 for 73. He was taken to the cleaners. Uh, Andre Russell, 8 overs, no maiden, 2 for 32. Sammy, 3 overs, 21. Uh, Suleiman Ben, I thought, uh, did a fine job uh, of uh, giving away 47 runs and picking up two wickets. Samuels, 4 overs for 23, but Nikita Miller was costly, 7 overs, 1 for 49. Match ending, but uh, my, I think Scotland would be pretty proud of this effort as uh, they only lost the match by just three runs to the, uh, to the mighty West Indians. Well, from here I'm going to take you on to the uh, other match, which is Bangladesh and Ireland. Uh, well, Bangladesh uh, were definitely some very good exhibition of bowling uh, from the Irish bowlers, I thought, because if you, if you look at the score, uh, Bangladesh were all up for 189 uh, in 48.2 overs. And uh, one significant uh, thing, and that is something uh, very, very pertinent, because Bangladesh uh, hit only six boundaries in their entire score of 189. So that tells you uh, what type, uh, the, the way the Irish bowlers are bowled. They, are, they have been absolutely on the money. Uh, John Mooney, look at, let's have a look at the bowling figures. Bangladesh all out 189, batting first against Ireland. And look at the bowling figures. It makes pretty impressive rating. 10 overs, no maiden, 32 runs, and he picked up 3 wickets. Max Sorensen, 9.2 overs, no maiden, 31 runs and 3 wickets. Splendid bowling figures. Kevin O'Brien, 10 overs, 1 for 39, did his job pretty well. Craig Young, uh, un unfortunately I wouldn't know if it was due to injury, but he bowled only solitary over, where he, which he uh, went for 13. Uh, look at uh, Sterling, Peter Sterling, 6 overs, none for 35. I have a, a very strong feeling that Craig Young was injured because he's a wonderful bowler. Uh, probably he couldn't bowl much and that's the reason uh, they had to rely on the other bowlers. So Peter Sterling, 6 overs, none for 35. Dockrell uh, did his job to a nicety. 8 overs, 1 made and 1 for 24. And Andy McBride, the spin of 4 overs, no made and 1 for 11. Let's have a look at the Bangladeshi card. Now Bangladesh for them, uh, this is not good news at all. They have been struggling after coming to Australia. And um, I have to say, Bangladesh have to really, really do something quickly with the World Cup looming large here. Uh, uh, Tommy McBall was dismissed uh, pretty cheaply for 4 of 11 balls. Anamul Haq making 25 of 72 balls and no boundaries. So that's what I'm telling you. I mean, I, I'll talk, to, uh, uh, talk about it later. Mominul Haq was out cheaply for 8. Uh, Soumya Sarkar was the highest scorer, contributing 45 of 51 balls with 2 balls before being run out by Dockrell. Shakib Larson making 8 of 12 deliveries. Mushfiqur Rahim making 26 of 34 balls with 2 fours. Sabir Rahman 20 of 33 balls with 2 fours. The fours were, in fact, the four, there were absolutely not a single six being hit, and the fours were an absolute rarity. And that is something, uh, some splendid bowling served by the Irishman, one could say. And uh, Nasir Hussain was out for six. Um, uh, Mustafa Murtaza uh, in the end making 22 of 35 balls, but without any boundaries and, and without any sixes. Tajul Islam, Duck, Tuskin Ahmad was not out or not. Let's have a, and uh, 189, as I said, not a sing, not only six boundaries conceded out of a score of 189 all out, really tells you uh, how tight the Irish bowling was and how they have actually throttled the Bangladeshi batting lineup uh, to such an extent that they bowled them out for 189, piling on the pressure time and again. Uh, look at the Ireland, let's have a look at the Ireland card now. Well, Ireland started. Well, Ireland, uh, uh, I would say, didn't have a good start. They lost uh, William Porterfield uh, pretty early, 24 of 41 balls, with two fours, and then uh, the talented Sterling was sent back to the pavilion by Shakib Lassen for five of 10 balls with one four. So that made it 47 for two. And in fact, Bangladesh were doing well. In fact, they also had got the wicket of Neil O'Brien uh, for um, Neil O'Brien was dismissed by Nasser Hussain for five, which made it 64 for three in the 17th over. And um, Bangladeshi definitely were, bowlers were definitely bowling well. They also picked up the wicket of Gary Wilson, who was bowled by Tajul Islam uh, for um, 
uh, for nine, which made the score 78 for four at the halfway stage. So Bangladesh, I thought, were doing uh, pretty well uh, till then. But after that, uh, we, we saw a partnership. Uh, but, but as I said, the score was so low that uh, Ireland could really relax. Uh, they could, even though they were losing wickets, they still had that buffer with them. Uh, and uh, Ed Joyce was the one uh, who was staying there. I thought Ed Joyce was the sort of uh, a real, um, a sort of uh, a real anchor man there. And Ed Joyce normally, uh, uh, I mean, is, a, is such a player who likes to stay at the crease and then also plays orthodox strokes. And that's what precisely Ed Joyce was doing. Uh, and that was the, I thought that was the, something which was needed because, um, as I said, Ireland were losing wickets even though they were comfortable. But Ed Joyce's presence was pretty much required. And then Ed Joyce uh, combined in a partnership with uh, Andy Balbirnie. Now Andy Balbirnie was the one who was instrumental in taking Ireland to victory uh, because once Ed Joyce was dismissed with the score on 137 in the 40th over, Ed Joyce was out for 47 of 87 balls with two fours. But Andy Balbirnie uh, got uh, uh, some um, got uh, good support from Kevin O'Brien, uh, who made a quick fire 23 of 16 deliveries with uh, four fours as is his wont, and as he was consumed by task in Hammond. But after that, it was Balbini who ensured that Ireland wouldn't lose this opportunity as he completed the formalities with an unbeaten 63 of uh, just 79 deliveries, six fours. Uh, Mooney was not out on two. A match over. Ireland winning the match by four wickets. Ireland 194-6. Let's have a look at the Bangladeshi bowling card. The Bangladeshi bowling, Al Hamin Hussain, 7.5 overs, one maiden, one for 40. Taskin Ahmed, nine overs, one maiden, one for 48. Shakib Lassan, 6 overs 27, he did his job pretty well, but as, it, as I said, the score was uh, pretty low to defend, one could say. Mashrafe Murtaza, I thought, bowled splendidly. Look at his bowling figures. I mean, the captain of the Bangladeshi team doing a fine job uh, of bowling 8 overs, 3 maidens, none for 13. That's splendid bowling figures. Nasir Hussain, 4 overs, 1 for 13. Tajul Islam also uh, took uh, 2 good wickets for 29 runs with 8 overs. And Sabir Rahman bowled 4 overs for 16. But as I said, uh, this is not good news for Bangladesh, especially going into the World Cup, because Ireland have defeated them pretty comfortably. Now, uh, dear fans and subscribers, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you live to the ground here where Afghanistan are playing on the United Arab Emirates. And with this, I'll be ending my uh, cricket happening show today with this uh, live cricket update as I normally do. Uh, well, as far as uh, this particular match is concerned, uh, Afghanistan are taking on the United Arab Emirates at the MCG, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, and the score right now, as I said, Afghanistan were winning the toss and electing to bat against the United Arab Emirates uh, are, um, are slowly trying to recover from a situation, one could say, because this particular partnership because, be, before, uh, between Asghar Skanikzai and Samila Shainwari has yielded 57 runs for the fourth wicket. Looking at the Afghanistan card here, uh, Javed Ahmadi, uh, well, I would say United Arab Emirates uh, did pretty well there because they picked up uh, both the openers pretty quickly. First it was uh, Amjad Javed, the pace bowler, uh, bowling splendidly, very good bowling figures. Uh, he got him uh, caught by Swapnil Patel, the wicketkeeper, for 12 of uh, 17 deliveries with two fours. That was the first wicket to go for the Afghanistanis. And then the second wicket, the, uh, the talented, uh, the baby of the whole World Cup for 2015, the, the baby player, one could say, is Usman Ghani. He's just 18 years of age. And today he was run out for 11 of 17 balls with one four, made it 25 for two. And when the score uh, was taken to 50 by Nauru's Mangal and Astro Stanik Zai, Nauru's Mangal himself succumbed as Amjad Javed was looking uh, pretty sharp today when he picked up his second wicket. When he picked up Nauru's Mangal for 16 of 17 balls, two fours and one six, which uh, reduced Afghanistan to 50 for three. But a brief recovery was done, and uh, right now the recovery is still the recovery process is still on with Asghar Stanik Zai really uh, playing uh, pretty well uh, to, with an unbeaten 33 to his name of 49 deliveries with 1-4 and 2 sixes. And Samir Shenwari uh, is giving him good company there, uh, not out on 29 of 39 balls. And the partnership uh, has uh, really, really blossomed, one could say, because they've added 57 runs for the fourth wicket, and it's still going on. So that's really uh, good to see that Afghanistan are fighting hard here. Uh, but I thought uh, United Arab Emirates have done a pretty good job here. Let's have a look at the bowling for the United Arab Emirates bowlers. Mohamed Navi, five overs, none for 35, but the wicket taker has been Amjad Javid, the pace bowler, who has been pretty sharp with this uh, bowling today. Seven overs, one maiden, 19 runs and two wickets. 
Kamran Shahzad bowled 6 overs for 34. Mohamed Takir uh, has been impressive too, 4 overs for 14. And Krishna Chandran uh, has bowled 1 over for 5 runs. So that's the match situation here. So with this cricket update on the match between Afghanistan and United Arab Emirates, uh, I'm going to end my cricket happening show for today. But as we all know, uh, the, the, the day is dawning, the D-Day is dawning, and that is the, the 14th of February on a Valentine's Day when England will, uh, Australia, in, in, uh, the host Australia and New Zealand will be kicking off the World Cup in grand fashion on that lovely day when Australia take on England. That will be the first match, and what a match that is going to be. As we know, they are arc rivals, and it would be a pleasure to see both these uh, teams battle it out uh, on, on, the, on the first day of World Cup 2015 and then at the other end of the Tasman um, we would be having the host New Zealand taking on the Sri Lankans so what else? So we are definitely definitely gearing up for the great World Cup 2015 well I think this is the last warm up match uh, I just need to see my calendar here but dear fans and subscribers your host Ram is always there to entertain you on this cricket show uh, thanks for your company as always Thanks for your tremendous support to this cricket show. Your host Ram would like to say goodbye today. Goodbye for now. Uh, goodbye and good night from a host Ram Studios here in Toronto. Thank you.